ABC Finance presenter Alan Kohler joins me now. Alan, what has, been, what has the Reserve Bank said today about the state of the economy and why has it decided to leave rates unchanged? Uh, mainly because it doesn't know really what's going on. Uh, the main thing it talked about was uncertainty. It doesn't really know what's going on with household consumption, global inflation, the Chinese economy. Um, and it didn't get enough information out of the most recent inflation data from the, uh, from the ABS, which was the monthly inflation indicator, because it didn't talk enough about services, didn't have enough information about services. So they basically decided to leave rates on hold because they haven't got enough information, I think, is the, is the long and short of it. Sure. So what's your sense, though, of whether they're a little bit more nervous about the economy going down in the new year rather than going up or inflation going up? Well, look, um, uh, they, it was what the economists call a hawkish pause, which is to say that they kind of they make it sound like they're leaning towards another rate hike, but they kind of always do that because they want us to expect rate hikes and so that we don't uh, cause prices to go up. But um, it, it all depends really on the uh, consumer price index for the December quarter, which is out on J January the 31st. And the, and the RBA's forecast for core inflation at, uh, in that is 1% for the quarter. So if it's uh, more than that, uh, then we'll probably get a rate hike in February. But if it's less, which is what most economists expect, and really I expect, is uh, then uh, there'll, there'll be a long pause. I, think, I don't think they'll put up rates in February. Well, the good news out of the statement seems to be that um, the banks are noticing that wages growth is not expected to increase much further and, really importantly, inflationary expectations don't seem to have risen, that people still are, are banking on that 2 to 3% inflation outlook. So that's got to be good news in terms of um, the future for interest rates, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, and they, and they are saying in the statement today that the that higher interest rates are beginning to work, that the labour the labour market is easing, uh, the economy is uh, weakening a little, you know. So, so they are uh, saying that it's uh, that it is easing. I mean, uh, we get the GDP number tomorrow um, for the September quarter, and I'm pretty sure it's going to so uh, show that without immigration, we'd be in recession all year. I mean, the first two quarters, uh, March quarter and June quarter, per capita GDP, that is to say, um, GDP uh, per person actually fell 0.3% in each quarter, and, and I think it's going to do that again. So three quarters in a row of, um, of recessionary numbers without immigration. So really, uh, you know, uh, that's what's holding the economy up. Well, it is, it is what is holding the economy up. And I suppose one of the interesting things to me, and I'm interested in what your take on this is, if we look back over the last 12 months, since we've now got to the last decision by the Bank of the Year, would you have ever thought that the economy would have held up as much as it has, given the battering it's taken from so many interest rate hikes, and in, especially given that we thought they'd finished um, a couple of months ago and then they, then they set off again? No, and I think it surprised everybody, probably including the RBA. It's, it's, the economy is tremendously strong, and, and, li and likewise in the US, um, uh, the economy there is resilient uh, in the face of a huge amount of uh, rate hikes. So, look, uh, um, I think it's very interesting uh, what's happening. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, uh, although there are a lot of losers from rate hikes, people whose finances, as the governor said today, their finances are, are being squeezed, there are a lot of winners from it as well. People have got a, who have got a lot of savings buffers who are, who are getting the benefit of higher interest rates. And so, uh, you know, I think that on, it's only on balance that monetary policy is working. Well, it sort of suggests that monetary policy is working differently, doesn't it? Because in Australia, I mean, uh, uh, beyond the migration point, we've now got the benefits of the superannuation policy put in place 40 years ago. We've got, we have got people with a lot of savings, with a lot of superannuation, and as you say, they're, they're now sort of uh, cheering every time interest rates go up. Um, and, and those savings are actually now a big part of disposable income in the economy. Yeah, that's right. And the other thing that's uh, sitting there at the moment is the overdoing of fiscal policy during the pandemic. I mean, there was so much money put into the economy during the pandemic that most of it wasn't needed, uh, as it turned out. Um, and so uh, a huge amount of money is now sitting in people's savings 
accounts that came from the government um, that was meant to just save the economy from going in over the abyss. Uh, but that didn't kind of happen. So, I mean, uh, and, and the other thing, of course, is that uh, the Reserve Bank cut interest rates to 0.1% for ages and left it there for ages, um, are probably unnecessary, certainly towards the end, and also engaged in quantitative easing, that is to say, printing money and buying bonds. And so there was this colossal amount of um, stimulus, both fiscal and monetary, during the pandemic, uh, which arguably wasn't needed in the end, uh, which is now kind of, uh, th there's this kind of hangover that's holding the economy, economy up. Feels like we may need a reset in the economic debate next year, and uh, hopefully you and I can discuss that at that stage. But for the moment, thanks so much for talking to us tonight. My pleasure.